A listeria outbreak killed one person and sickened at least 22 others across the U.S. And the CDC traced the source to ice cream sold in Florida. Joining us now is Dr. Ryan Rivera, Assistant Medical Director of the Stanford Emergency Department. Thanks for being here. Happy to be here. Listeria is usually caused by eating contaminated food. So what exactly is it and what causes it? Yeah, well, it, it's a type of bacteria that is found in a number of foods, as you said, generally raw vegetables, meat, unpasteurized milk or unpasteurized cheeses, things like that. It's actually found all around us in small amounts. And for most healthy people, it's not really a problem. But if the food is contaminated or it's not prepared correctly, then the bacteria can become more concentrated and that's when it can cause illness. So, you know, the first time I was pregnant with my older son, that was the, really when I paid attention to listeria because I think people who are pregnant um, are at risk as well. Is that correct still? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, pregnant patients are about 18 times uh, more likely to acquire serious listeria infections with exposures, but they're not the only ones. Um, those over the age of 65, those who have compromised immune systems, like if you're undergoing chemotherapy or if you have medications for autoimmune diseases, are also at uh, relatively high risk for listeria infection. So what are some of the symptoms you should look for when it comes to listeria? Well, you know, it can be very challenging, actually. Uh, like most foodborne illnesses, it can often have some gastrointestinal effects, diarrhea, vomiting, stomach cramping, but it can also sometimes just be body aches, weakness, fatigue. And, you know, to, to make it even more tricky, it can show up, those symptoms can show up 24 hours after exposure. Sometimes they don't show up until 70 days after exposure. Um, so certainly if you have a gastrointestinal illness or if you're, if you're feeling very wiped and it's not going away, and you want to see your doctor and there's tests that they can run to help you sort it out. Well, 70 days, that might be very hard to pinpoint exactly what caused it. Yeah, it definitely can. I mean, certainly if there's a known exposure, then that gives you some clues. Um, eventually, there are blood tests that they can run it once you start having more serious symptoms that can identify it. But it can be very tricky to identify. So how do you treat it? Well, it's antibiotics. It is a bacterial infection, so it is susceptible to antibiotics. Um, and in more serious cases, that might require IV antibiotics and hospitalization. And, and the other thing, too, is especially if they're having a lot of vomiting, diarrhea, you need to give a lot of IV fluids because dehydration can come along with those symptoms, and that can have serious effects as well. All right, and finally, what kind of precautions should we take to prevent getting listeria? You know, if, if you're a healthy person with no particular medical problems, then there's not a lot you need to do beyond basic food safety. So that is washing and scrubbing raw vegetables, making sure you're cooking meats all the way through, not drinking unpasteurized milk products, things like that. But if you are immunocompromised or if you're pregnant, then you're going to want to take some extra precautions. So that's usually avoiding soft cheeses altogether, avoiding deli meats, sprouts, kind of raw or only lightly cooked uh, fish. Those can all carry listeria. And you've probably heard that advice before for pregnant patients. And, and really, this is why. is because of the high risk they carry of listeria contamination and the extra risks that those pose to pregnant patients. Yeah, no doubt. I, I learned that quickly um, when I was pregnant with my kids. So, yeah, good information. Dr. Ryan Rivera with Stanford, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, happy to be here.